Amma Ba'd. We begin by praising Allah and we send blessings and salutations upon the best of creation, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his family and companions, and all of those who follow him up until Yawm Al Qiyamah. And Yawm Al Qiyamah, indeed, it is something that we need to be reminding ourselves of on a daily basis. As we find with the people today, we get so engrossed in this worldly life that we hardly have any time to remember the Akhirah. But as Allah says in Surah Qiyamah, La uqasimu bi yawm al qiyamah wa la uqasimu bi nafs al Again, Allah is beginning by making two powerful oaths. When Allah makes an oath, it is to emphasize a point. When he's saying that he swears by Yawm al Qiyamah, the greatest day to ever exist, that will ever exist. A very heavy day, as Allah describes it in some places. Yawm al Azim. It is a very heavy day for each and every single creation. May Allah protect us on that day. And I swear by the soul that feels guilt, because guilt is one of the most powerful emotions. That no matter how wretched of an individual someone may be, they will still feel guilt. From the best of the people to, to the worst of the people, everybody feels guilt. At some point when the conscience kicks in, no matter what sort of evil they may be spreading, no matter what sort of corruption they may be spreading in society, they will end up feeling that guilt. Majority of the people, they cover it by going to the bottles, by taking the drugs, not realizing that it doesn't take it away. What does Allah say? أَيَحْسَبُ الْإِنسَانُ أَلَّنَّ جَمَعَ عِظَامَهُ بَلَا قَادِرِينَ عَلَىٰ أَن نُسَوِّيَ بَنَانَهُ Does mankind think? Does mankind think that we cannot bring him back? Does mankind think that we cannot bring him back and resurrect him? And when we find with human beings and with, with the people, the time when we start falling into sin, is when we start neglecting Yawm al Hisab. When we start forgetting that Hisab is going to come to us for every word, for every step, for every action that we take, Hisab, there's going to be a Hisab for it. Allah says, Bala Qadirin, indeed we are able, we will resurrect each and every single human up until their very fingertips and their fingerprints are there, accurate. This is what Allah says. And we continue, he continued to say, بَلِ الْإِنسَانُ عَلَىٰ نَفْسِهِ بَصِيرًا أَكْبَرٌ That mankind will testify against themselves on that day. وَلَوْ أَلْقَى مَعَاذِيرًا Even though we love to throw excuses. And that's what we find in this life. That whenever we commit sins, many of the times we want to justify it. I had no choice. Or I was just a little bit weak. Yes, كُلُّ بَنِي آدَمْ خَطَّى But what does the believer do? Every single son of Adam is a sinner, but what does the believer do? What is the believer's attitude towards sins? He never makes excuses. Because he knows that the excuses, that comes from hypocrisy in the heart. And may Allah protect us all from hypocrisy. It is one of the worst diseases to have. A disease that is present in each and every single heart. No matter who we may be. It is something that we always have to be clearing. It is something we always have to be clearing. But Allah says, that your own bodies will testify against you. You will give insight on your own deeds. When Allah, he, we are standing before Allah, he, he mentioned in Surah Yasin that He will seal the mouths. Their hands will speak on that day. Your hands will speak on the day. Every single time we are scrolling, we are liking, we are subscribing, and doing everything else with our hands, when we know ourselves that it's wrong, Maybe people are not watching you and I at night. But You will testify against yourselves on that day. I will be testifying against myself on that day. Even our feet, the places we used to walk to. Did we used to walk to Haram? How we used to use our eyes? Did we used to lower our gaze? SubhanAllah, today we have new harassment laws, I'm sure you've heard. People are even looking into it now where a male should not be touching a female in the work environment. But the Sharia told this a long time ago. Allah, he mentioned this a long time ago. When he said, lower your gaze. That is not allowed for a mahram, or for a male or for any individual to be touching a non-mahram. 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, it is better for you to take a nail and stab your head with it than for you to touch a non mahram woman. But we have it today, right? The Muslims themselves. Because today we want to behave. We act as though we are not strong enough in our iman. But actually we are. Each and every single person sitting over here, we have the strength. But sometimes we want to act like we were born yesterday in terms of iman. We, were just, we became Muslims yesterday. And reverts are even stronger in Iman at time. May Allah protect us. May Allah protect us. Well, what are we doing? Your beard's turning white and you're still in a wedding where there's music and there's free mixing. But your own body, your own eyes, your own mouth, your own ears, they will speak against you on that day. There's so many scenarios we can cover with this ayah. But the simple thing is, we need to do hisab on ourselves. The way we look, are we, are we using it to look at that which is pleasing to Allah? Are we using our sight and our hearing in the obedience of Allah? Because if not, then what is going to be your situation when Allah resurrects you on Yawm Al-Qiyamah and you find your own faculties speaking against you? May Allah protect us all from that scenario. May Allah protect us all on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. On that day, nobody shall be safe. And that's something we have to remind ourselves of. Whilst, you know, We love the immediate. Everything we wanted right now. We love this worldly life. We love to get engrossed in this worldly life. But to the rune al akhirah And we end up neglecting the akhirah. And so the simple question we can ask ourselves, even today, whilst we're sitting here right now, how much of neglect have we shown towards our akhirah? Is your salah in order? But Allah, He continues to say in Surah Qiyamah, فَلَا صَدَّقَ وَلَا صَلَّى He never believed, nor did He pray. <coughs> he denied and turned away. <laughs> he would go to his family and his people with swagger, thinking he's proud of himself. Proud of what? Of foolishness? <laughs> Those who do not know what's good for themselves. Those who do not know what's bad for themselves. In reality. Those who do not adopt the Qur'an. You know the Qur'an, one of the names of the Qur'an is Muhaymin. It is a witness over you and me. Every single week we're coming, we're hearing the meaning of the Qur'an, the explanation of the Qur'an, a maw'idah, an admonition, something to exhort us, to awaken our hearts. We hear something, but then we turn away. What do you think the Qur'an will do on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, when you and I stand? Will it be bearing witness for you or against you? When Allah said, Aqimus Salah, Aqimus Salah li dhikri Establish the Salah for the remembrance of Allah. Inna salata tanha anil fahsha'i wal munkar. Today we are all falling into the fitan and the facade around us and the temptation in society. But the simple answer is, if we are establishing our salah correctly with its arkan, with its preconditions and its conditions fulfilled, then that becomes a barrier for you and for me against every single type of sins. So every single time we come for Yom Al-Jumu'ah, the simple question again, look at it, look at society. There's no need to be shy about it. Right? It's not a hidden truth or something like that. Sometimes we, we feel ashamed to mention the truth. How many people are sitting over here right now for Salatul Fajr, or rather for Salatul Jumu'ah, where are you for Fajr? Where are you for Fajr? Is that your Hisab? What do you think is going to be your Hisab on Yawm Al-Qiyamah? But what's it going to take for you and I to realize? What is it going to take to soften our hearts? That's the question we need to leave with today. What is it going to take to soften your hearts to live a life of obedience and stay away from all sins to the best of your abilities? There are some people, nothing will melt their hearts. Nothing in this life is hot enough to melt their hearts except for Jahannam. Nothing is hot enough to melt some hearts except for Jahannam. That's one of the reasons why Jahannam is there. Ask yourself the question, is your heart so hard that the only thing that can melt it is Jahannam itself? Or are we going to try establish the salah? Allah mentions this three times in the Quran. We'll finish on this note that whoever does not judge by the book of Allah, it doesn't, not, it doesn't matter whether you're living in a secular country, right? We all have the Quran available. We all understand the Quran. We have the translations. Allah says, Whoever does not make his decisions, whether it be in your individual lives or in your collective lives, or in your families, whoever does not judge by the book of Allah, he's committing three things. Allah, he mentioned it three times. You've committed zulm, 
You've committed kufr. And you've committed fisk. Allahu Akbar. Now very, very quickly, this is not major kufr. You do not leave the fold of Islam. But you have committed a sin, worse than the major sins. Minor kufr. Kufrun ni'ma. The kufr of actions. Something that we do have to repent for. When we come to our families, when we come to the masjid, with what book, with what scripture are we judging by? With whose sharia are we living by? The sharia of Allah, the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa or lesser policies and regulations that we are forced to do at times. Look at our health and safety, look at everything else around us. Go to your works, in your work environments. Whose laws are you following? Yes, we have to follow the law of the land, but do you put that above the sharia? If that's the case, What's going to change it? If you think you cannot implement the Sharia in your life in this country, what are you still doing here? When Allah has given you the ability to go to another country, to do hijrah perhaps, but we can, and we have to come together as a ummah to ensure that the Sharia is being established correctly. We'll keep it over there for today. Again, it's already half past. Time already goes so fast. There were so many more things to say. But we'll continue next week, inshallah, by the permission of Allah. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim. Wa nafa'ani wa iyyakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim. Aqulu qawli hadha. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubi ilayk. الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد we'll finish with two last points number one is that رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم he said and again we cannot finish a khutbah or do a khutbah except that we have to mention the ahadith what رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم has said that الدين النصيحة that this deen is nasiha, fulfilling the rights. The rights of who? The Sahaba asked. Lillah, the rights of Allah. And Wali Kitabi, the book of Allah. Wali Rasuli, and his messenger, fulfilling the rights of the Sunnah that's upon us. Wa immatil muslimin, and the Imams of the Muslimin. Wali Amma, and the general folk, your, your, your spouses, your children, your families, your parents. This is deen. This is deen. This is how we live our life. And second, when it comes to the just a general announcement, we have many people today who are suffering with illnesses. Many of us, even over here in our society, we are suffering with these illnesses. And so we should all remember them in our du'as. Again, we ask Allah for all of those suffering in any shape, manner, or form to grant them afiyah and to grant them ease.